Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Forever Stranded. Hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing amazing. So, I have been doing some work in between episodes, getting some stuff taken care of with the silk meshes and all of that. And I have also been doing some building. So if we pop up over here, there are some new spots over here. And if we take a look closer at this, we can see that I already have part of, whoa, I already have part of it set up with farmland and a farmer. Now, what I wanted to put into this farmland was canola. Unfortunately, as the canola started to grow, it very promptly turned into dead crops from tough as nails. So I broke all of what was left still alive and grabbed the stuff out of the farmer just to kind of see what was going on. And looks like we're doing fairly good here. I'm actually going to change this um, so that we have that. And let's turn that off. So now we can see how much power we have here and what is happening. So this coal generator from Actually Editions is making 30 RF tick. Yeah, we can do better. So we are trying to get a better power supply and that's part of the reason why I want to get this canola. And hopefully by the end of the episode we'll be able to take a look at some of the stuff that we can do with that. But I want to figure out what is going on with Tough as Nails so that we can get our crops to grow here. So the first thing that I want to do is make this season clock so that we can tell what season it actually is which I am assuming it is winter right now. But, I mean, I'm still getting really hot. So we're going to go ahead and make this season clock. Very simple recipe. We're gonna grab one piece of redstone and four uh, nether quartz. Place nether quartz around the redstone and that is going to make our season clock. So let's see what this says it is. So it looks like, uh, I don't know. I can't tell. Can, can you tell what that says? I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that should help us to kind of start figuring some of this out. Kind of looks like we're halfway in between winter and summer. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at that wrong. But, uh, yeah, I'll kind of keep an eye on that and see how it moves because obviously it will be moving and one thing that i do want to do here is to see will this work in an item frame so let's come over here and grab a little bit of leather and some sticks and we'll go ahead and make this into an item frame oh we don't have wow we don't even have any flint left in here i am very surprised at that so let's go ahead and grab those and around Put the leather in the middle, item frame, and there we go. Okay, so now if we put this on the wall somewhere, let's put it right here. So yes, it does look like that is displaying the same thing as uh, it actually is, and that would make sense because it's basically a clock just for seasons. And clocks work in item frames. So we'll keep that there and give, give it an idea. So I was doing a little bit of reading on the wiki and it looks like if your crops are dying it's probably winter time now to deal with that you need to get uh, get everything warmed up now I would assume that means that we need to cover the space that we're working in kind of like we have to cover the space that the cooling coils work in in order for them to actually function so if we come Oh, geez. It's still not quite nighttime. Come on. Let me sleep. So, in order to make the heating coils, we need blaze rods. Now, I didn't know how we were going to get blaze rods. I hadn't looked to see if there were any recipes really for it. And sure enough, there actually is a recipe, and that's with the compressor from uh, Industrial Craft 2. So we need five blaze powder and we can compress that into a blaze rod. So perfect. We've already started doing some industrial craft, so that's no big deal. So this uh, compressor 
is a very simple. It is a basic machine casing, an electronic circuit, and six pieces of stone. Now I can't remember if I cooked some stone. Does not look like it. So we may not have any cooked stone at the moment, but uh, if we don't, that should be very, please stop bouncing. Should be very easy to take care of. Yeah, we don't have any cooked stone. So let's go ahead and grab some cobble. Yep. Okay, that should be good. We'll throw this in our automatic furnace array. And this, we don't need a lot in here. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and fuel everything up and get that going. We need six pieces. In the meantime, we need a few other things. We'll transfer all of this over here because yeah, why not? Look at how much charcoal we have already. And I just recently refilled this one. So yeah, we don't even have room for a stack in there. Um, this guy over here is full of power at the moment. So we're not really too concerned there. These guys are kind of wasting power. It should be nice once we finally get some better generators though. So we've got four so far, come on, just give me six. So once we get that done, we should be able to see if possibly this will keep things alive. Now, I don't know if I want to do it with the canola seeds. I suppose we still could. So yeah, we'll, we'll try it with the canola seeds and see if uncovered works, but I don't think that it will. So there's that. We will grab a couple of stacks of blaze powder. We've been getting this from uh, sieving dust, which we actually haven't sieved dust for a while. We may need to set up our Ender IO uh, grinder to do that. Whoops. And another thing that I intend to do here is to put a bridgeway between these buildings. That'll be something that I will do. Wow. Something that I do as the buildings get bigger and more developed. What on earth did I hit? I don't know. But yeah, let's get in here, make our stuff, and continue on with what we're doing. So first thing that we need is a bunch of... Well, we need one of these. Do we have any iron plates? Yes, we do. Okay. And yeah, now that we're making it in the... Uh, metal former we don't have the other issue anymore so now we need basic machine casing electronic circuit stone there we go compressor epic squeeze <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and place this up here and immediately our generators start doing their thing we're going to you know, let's go ahead and throw some iron into our metal former, use the power up in there, and then pull out our energy and overclocker upgrades. And you know what, we'll just leave that. Oh, crud, we're making cable. I'm sure we'll use it eventually. What does this stuff do? So we can actually, we can uh, obviously make some cable with it. Uh, RF energy to EU can, wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we can actually convert stuff. And what do we do with these? Okay, so this is a extreme voltage transformer. Wow. EU detector cable. That's about it. What are these? These don't use splitter cable. I don't know what those do, but yeah, that extreme voltage. Wow. Okay, so we'll go ahead and drop our energy upgrades in there. And a few overclockers. Let's see. Now we're still gaining. So let's go ahead and keep adding some overclockers. Okay, now we're losing power. But we need six per heating coil. So there we go. There's that. Man, it makes it pretty fast now. Six overclocker upgrades. That will make an awful lot. Okay, so we've got 12 of them. The other thing that we needed there was cobblestone. So we should have, yep, we've got some cobblestone in here. Let's go ahead and make a couple of those. And then we need a lever. 
and let's just see what happens here. I would assume that the crops are still going to die and we're going to have to actually cover the area. So if we place this over here, and you know what, we'll place one on each side of the lever so that we can do both of them at once. I don't think that's going to make any difference. Oh wow, immediately my, my temperature went up. So now let's go ahead and plant a little canola right beside these and just see. The worms are causing them to grow, which is good. And I guess we could try watering can. This will get it to grow a little faster. So what I'll do is I will just let this go for a little bit and see what happens. So yeah, we'll see what this does. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I'm really hoping that this farmer will, will work. Whoops, that, yeah, I'd say the farmer should work because they're both from actually additions. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, run this for a while, see what happens, and I will see you guys in a little bit. Well, so far it would appear that this is working reasonably well. We've gotten a decent amount of canola so far and quite a bit of additional canola seeds. Now, I did have one crop die out of all of them and it looks like we just got some rotten flesh which yeah stay away but we did have one crop die and I did find it interesting that the planter will not replant that so I'm going to break that crop and just see if that was a fluke or what because nothing else has died since then but we are going to get back over into the other building here and like I said we will have a bridgeway there eventually and we have a bunch of stuff to look at here so first off let's get rid of some of this stuff that we don't need in our inventory which would be the great majority of it at the moment and let's take a look at what we've got going on here so first off we are going to try to get this temperature regulator because I am getting a little tired of having temperature going just absolutely ballistic so the temperature regulator we need cooling coils heating coils iron generators and advanced circuitry so the iron generator for that we need a stone generator with some stuff and that's a wooden generator with some stuff and the wooden generator is logs block of redstone rf engine and furnace so we're going to start out by making the RF engine. We are going to place that into this recipe and get ourselves a wooden generator. The wooden generator we put in here to make the stone generator. Stone generator goes in here to make the iron generator. Next up, we have our heating coil and then our advanced circuit. Now we'll put all of this stuff together and we will get ourselves the temperature regulator. So let's see if that finished our quest here in the basic survival, and yes, it did. Okay, so this is going to give us two lava mills, a weather siren, a loot chest, and then we get a choice of one of these three loot chests. Well, I was always told, always pick C, so we're gonna pick the third one there, and there we go. And so next up, we have regulate on the go. Going long distance is hard on the body. Maybe making the regulator portable will help you on your travels. Oh, and a thirst quencher. I guess I didn't pay attention to that. So this gives some interesting stuff. It actually looks like they were wanting us to get into IC2 or some type of, uh, well, we've got, that's thermal expansion, that's Ender IO. That's thermal expansion, that's IC2, that's IC2, I don't know. So it's kind of what you want. I think we would go for four loot chests, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we got out of our loot chests. Are these gonna be anything worthwhile? Two emerald ore, not great. Not, not bad, but not great. And 16 oak. That is not good. That's horrible. That is garbage beyond belief. The lava mill is nice. So if we put lava alongside these, it will produce grid power 
And grid power is going to be kind of important for what's coming up on the uh, extra utility stuff. So we will be looking at that here soon. But uh, let's just see, has anything died over here in the meantime? And we need some water. So let's go ahead and grab our water. And then grab some more water. Mmm, water is good. Okay, so let's just take a look. Has anything died? Doesn't look like it. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on this. And if it doesn't work out, then what we're going to have to do is put a roof on this so that we can put our temperature regulator in there. The temperature regulator, though, is going to go inside of this building, and we're going to need one for each floor, so that's going to start to get expensive after a while, and kind of a pain in the butt to deal with uh, crafting with those RF engines, because they don't stack. So, next up, we need to look at what we're going to be doing with this canola. So, let's take a look at uh, Actually Additions. And with actually additions, we can turn that canola into oil with a canola press. So this is going to take a nori crystals, some canola, an advanced coil, and some cobblestone. The advanced coil is a coil surrounded with gold nuggets, and the coil is Rustonia crystal around a black quartz. So I'm going to make that, and then we need to have some way to pull that out of, pull the oil out of the press and put it into a tank. So we need to look at tanks first and uh, hmm, pressurized tank from advanced rocketry. Not exactly what I'm looking for. So I think what we'll probably need to do is get a fluid tank from Ender IO. So this takes glass, iron, and iron bars. Not bad at all. So we'll get a couple of those and these actually should be able to pull the items out of the uh, press. So let's go ahead and get over here and grab the, uh, oh, I must have landed on one of them. Yep. Well, the worms will retill that, so I don't have to worry about that. That's nice. But we should have everything that we need to now try this out and see if we can make it work. So, yeah. Got to get these, uh, I need entrance points to these buildings. But let's go ahead and grab, so we're going to need some cobblestone, we're going to need some iron, and uh, what else did we need? Uh, oh, we need gold nuggets, we need Restonia crystal, we need uh, black quartz, we need a few things. So, yeah, I suppose I will craft these up and we'll see what we can do with them. And by the way, our season clock is now showing more in the blue. So, yeah, something is definitely changing. So we'll see how things go. So we now have our canola press, but we are not going to be pressing canola on this floor. So let's go ahead and go up a floor and we'll set this up over here. So we have our canola press. Now if we put canola in here, I don't believe, oh, we do need power for this thing. Darn it. Okay, so we are going to need to go and grab one of our generators from over here. Not all that big of a deal. We'll just grab one of them and call it good. So, there we go. So we got a full stack of charcoal and a generator. Let's go ahead and get over here and get this thing started. Whoa, geez. Yeah, gotta get better ways to move around here. So we'll put our coal generator right beside it for the moment and throw some coal in. So this will start making canola oil. Now we can do much better than we are doing currently. So let's go ahead and put our fluid tank on top. We're going to configure this to pull from the bottom. Will that work? No, okay. So let's go ahead and pick this guy back up. Okay, well, it works from the side and we don't even have to have it configured. So that works just fine. Let's go ahead and put that back to none. And we have more than a bucket of canola oil already. So 
now we need to look at what we're going to do with this canola oil. So for the moment, I'm going to pull that charcoal out because what we're going to be making is this oil generator. Now the oil generator takes some iron casings, a canola, and some cobblestone. Iron casings are iron sticks and black quartz. So nothing overly expensive for that. But we can now make it to where this will be sort of a self-sustaining unit. Uh, we need iron. Iron. There we go. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a couple of iron kit. Oh, black quartz. Black quartz. Okay. So we need iron casings. And we need two of those. And then we need this. So there is our oil generator. So what are we gonna be doing with this thing? First off, we need to grab ourselves a bucket. So let's go ahead and grab a bucket and we are going to head back upstairs. Upstairs. So this coal generator is now done and we are going to place the oil gener generator next to it. So let's grab a bucket of oil and we can then put this into the oil generator. Now this will use the oil fairly quickly, but you can see now the press is refilling the oil generator. Now the problem with the oil generator is very simple. It is very inefficient because it will continue to burn oil even after the power reaches maximum. So. We need to get this thing set up with power storage and then get it to where it shuts off once the power storage gets to a certain point. Now that is actually an easier thing to do than you might think because I believe you can take a redstone signal off of a comparator on a, a capacitor bank. I don't think these guys, these have an output. So they have input and output. So, but uh, we can, I believe we can take a comparator output off of these guys and figure out actually how much power is in it. How are we doing here anyway? Okay, we are actually filling up pretty good. We're getting a lot of stuff here. And yeah, we're actually gonna grab all of this because we need all of these things for what we're going to be doing next. So, the next thing that we need to do is get back up here. Actually, that is not the next thing that we need to do. The next thing that we need to do is get over here. Yep. Wow. It is so easy to get confused on what direction you're going here. So what we're going to do is grab our atomic reconstructor We'll grab that and we are going to grab one basic capacitor bank. Now the question is which one can we afford to grab? Looks like we can only afford to grab that one. Well guess what? We'll just go ahead and put this back in there. There we go. So now this one has some power in it. This guy does not but we need this so that we can do our next step in improving our power generation. So let's head back over here. We're gonna go upstairs and we're going to put this capacitor bank right here. So now that will grab the excess power out of the oil generator and we're going to throw some more canola in here. We have three buckets of oil. That should be good enough at the moment. But so now what we need to do is put our atomic reconstructor right here that will get completely filled with power immediately or it stored its power i don't know which but we're going to place that button right there and then what we do is we take a canola seed throw it in front of the reconstructor whoop magnet okay um we need somewhere that we can put our magnet let's grab ourselves a chest um, a chest. There we go. There's a chest. 
So we will place a chest up here so that we can throw our magnet in there. Then we need to throw our seed out. And that turns this into now a crystallized canola seed. So what do we do with the crystallized canola seed? We need a bit of glass and we need to bucket out one bucket of oil. And we throw our crystallized seed in here? No, that's not the next step. Okay, so the next step after this, yeah, we need the empower next. Oh boy. So this is gonna take more canola seeds and then that crystallized seed, and that's gonna make the empowered canola seed. Now, once we get the empowered canola seed, we take that and throw it into the oil and it will give us this stuff, the empowered oil. Now, if we look at the book here, the empowered oil gives us much better power generation. So, um, I think it tells us here. It, actually, it doesn't, no. Okay, so there are there is another step here. You can use a fermenting barrel convert canola oil into oil okay so we need to convert it into oil first and then we can make the crystallized oil so yes we need this is what we need next we need our fermenting barrel so let's go down here we should have everything that we need here so grab that and we need inori and let's get this guy Oh, we're missing our wooden casing. We need planks. Well, we have planks. We have the technology. So let's make a wooden casing and then our fermenting barrel. There we go. There is that. So now the fermenting barrel, we'll take this back up here and we'll place this down right there. Grab our bucket of oil and put it in here. So this will slowly ferment into regular oil. So it is a one-to-one -one conversion ratio, and we can store up to two barrels in the fermenting barrel, or two buckets in the fermenting barrel. So this is going to take a little time. I'm going to let this do its thing, and I will be back. You know, I really love it when mods actually put in things like this so that you can turn something off with a redstone signal so yeah we definitely have our canola oil in here it's completely full but we're not generating any power at the moment because i have a lever that's on in front of it so we can run through our 1 million rf of storage in our basic capacitor if we hook that up properly currently we don't have it hooked up properly but that's not that big of a deal so next up we need to take this we have a bucket of oil here on the ground and yeah we're actually making it quite rapidly here and so before we do this let's go ahead and drop a couple more seeds on the ground and turn those into crystallized seeds then we will take and throw a crystallized seed out and this has now made the crystallized oil so we need a tank for this as well Oh, apparently I had left something on the ground. We're just gonna make all of the tanks because yeah, that makes sense. So this is actually going to be our overall power supply is this stuff. So we're going to be doing a lot of work with oil. So yeah, this is the next step though. We get to the crystallized oil I don't remember how much additional power the crystallized oil gives over the regular oil, but I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. But also we need to make sure that we're keeping our canola seed or our canola in here so that we can do our pressing. So how are our plants doing? Looks like we need to sleep, but I don't see any dead plants out there. So that is good. We'll see what we've got here just to make sure. We have lots of husks is what we've got. 
So yeah, there are no dead plants here. Nice. And what have we got over here? We have a bit of canola and some canola seeds. So very nice. So we're starting to get our oil production up and running. The next thing to do will be to figure out how we're going to get our power over to here because obviously we need to get rid of this coal generator so that we can power this with the oil that is being produced by the farm. So I will be doing some looking at that. Oh, we have a dead crop. So that is actually the first dead crop that we've had for a while that was not there when I just came over as far as I know. So we may have to put a cover on this and it may be as simple as just a glass roof. And I'm pretty sure we have some nice clear glass. And so yes, we do have clear glass from Tinker's Construct. Oh, Tinker's Construct. Oh, So we do have quite clear glass from Enderio as well. That, uh, what? what? Okay, I am, that's blue or cyan. I don't need a colored one. I need colorless. Oh, okay, so we need an alloy smelter and we just need to smelt glass in an alloy smelter. Okay. So that will be something that we need to do as well. And the alloy smelter, yeah, that's not bad at all. So we will probably be getting a little of that stuff taken care of, but we will be doing that in the next episode because I'm out of time. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or anything that you would like to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.